migraine is the second leading cause of disability worldwide. And many patients with migraine discontinue medications due to side effects, lack of efficacy, or costs. And so there's a huge need for non-drug treatment options. Many patients even turn to opioids. A third of patients turn to opioids for acute relief from migraine, despite recommendations against opioid use by the American Headache Society. And so there's really a huge need for non-drug treatment options for migraine. So we conducted a randomized clinical trial evaluating mindfulness meditation through an intervention called Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction, or MBSR, which involves eight weekly in-person classes where individuals learn and um, practice experiential mindfulness. So mindfulness is a skill and a capacity that we all have, and we're born with the ability to be mindful. But as we grow and develop our prefrontal cortex and an ability to think about the present and the future and the past, we often lose our capacity to regularly live in the present moment. And so mindfulness teaches individually, individuals experientially um, how to practice living in the present moment through experiential practices of mindfulness meditation. So in this randomized control trial, we created a comparator control group of headache education that we matched on time and attention to the intervention of MBSR. So individuals were randomized to MBSR or headache education. And our primary outcome was for headache frequency. And we had secondary outcomes of headache-related disability, pain catastrophizing, um, depression, and self-efficacy, as well as several others, including the ability to look at um, experimental heat pain testing and assessing individuals' response to experimental heat pain. One of the unique aspects of our study design was that we randomized individuals without them knowing the course content of the two groups. And so specifically, individuals did not know that this study was for mindfulness meditation, but rather individuals were told that this would involve eight weekly classes where they would learn more information without medications, but individuals were able to continue all of their medications throughout the study. And so in this way, we were trying to blind individuals to the treatment assignment to both minimize the ability um, to decrease bias and increase the validity of the study. In addition, we really want to decrease dropouts due to um, the differences in groups and decrease group expectation differences, as well as minimize selection bias of only those interested in mindfulness. So we're really excited by our results. We found that both MBSR and headache education decrease headache frequency um, in similar amounts. However, only the group and only the participants in the MBSR intervention had decreases in headache-related disability, depression, and pain catastrophizing. In addition, only the individuals in the MBSR group had decreases in their responses to experimental heat pain intensity and experimental heat pain unpleasantness, with the intensity representative of the sensory component of pain and the unpleasantness representative of the affective component of pain, demonstrating that mindfulness may have changed people's pain appraisal. And so this study was really fascinating in that so many of our secondary outcomes were positive, suggesting that mindfulness may decrease total migraine burden. However, it is really important that we conduct future research to further understand these findings since they were secondary outcomes and since our primary outcome was equal with both interventions. One person one time commented that by saying mindfulness may help migraine, it's suggesting that we think mindful, migraine is all in the head. And on the contrary, migraine is a complex neurological disease, and it is not just in the head. And mindfulness may be one treatment approach that may be able to help treat the total burden of migraine. And so it's really important in the research that we're doing for people to recognize that this may not be the one and only treatment approach, but is a part of a comprehensive treatment approach for migraine. And in the clinical trial that we conducted, individuals did stay on all of their medications 
conditions. And so the mindfulness was on top of typical treatment as usual as well. So at a time when opioids are still using, being used for migraine treatment against recommendations, finding non-opioid treatment options for migraine is so critical. It has been such an honor to receive this American Academy of Neurology Award, and I'm so appreciative.